and you don't mind submitting that? No, that's fine. At the end. Okay, well then I can go ahead and take notes if that works with everyone. Um, yeah. Does anyone, uh, let's see, I'm under view only. So I'm going to request edit access to the document you created. Is that okay? Yeah. Okay. I did it. Send request. So I just sent that. So I'll just use that to type. And then since you've already shared it with everyone, if we want to edit it afterwards before we go on. And then. Sure. Or wait, does that mean you have to upload it? Because it's yours. I don't think so. Okay, good. Then I'll make sure I share the link for that once we get that all. Okay, you should be able to edit it now. Okay. Uh, I'll reload it, but it just told me I'm... Okay, now it's loading, I think. Okay, sweet. I can get on here now. Okay, perfect. Now, I went through the instructions, and I couldn't find any way... It doesn't sound like she wants a specific format for the notes. So, should I just go bullet point? Like, I want to make sure we all get the best grade possible. So, how do you guys think we should write this out since we have to turn it in? So, last time, my group did bullet points. She said, mm -hmm. which is totally fine. We just have to make sure we elaborate more. So, okay. as long as we put enough information on each bullet point, I think we'll be okay. Okay, perfect. Well, then I'll just start out with bullet points. And then as we elaborate, I'll try to type fast. And then if we all want to look at it after the meeting and add anything, then we can do that then. Does that work? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess we could do, we could do a like subheading of overt references and then subtle references if we want to okay. be there. Yeah, I can Let's see here. I'm trying to. There we go. Okay. All right. All right. Perfect. Okay. So then we've got that ready. So let's see. All right. So we've all watched the video, right? And look through the article we've all been able to do that is that correct yep. yeah okay perfect okay before the meeting begins blah 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 blah. okay we just did that sorry for my slack there oh, you're good. okay mm -hmm. during the discussion take turns talking about the points you identified both the overt references and more subtle ones know the trends of your finding as a group did everyone identify the same points or not talk about your observations was anyone surprised by the findings or observations discuss and record how a treatment professional or paraprofessional might prepare to capitalize on such opportunities to introduce or reinforce the types of resilience factors from Walsh's article. Okay, so should we just start out with going, since there's only three of us, we can just basically go in a row until we find that none of us found any other findings, if that makes sense. So we'll just start off with one, talk about one of the findings that you noticed, and then go to the next person and keep going till we're out. Yeah. Does that work with everybody? Yeah. Okay, perfect. Um, so I guess I can start with one. Um, and this one, I was actually still trying to look about what category it would go under. And I think it was more under communication. Um, but like with, uh, I don't know, I'm probably under because she said check it off to Walsh's document. So I kind of tried to put them under categories of what he has. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like it goes under open emotional expression, but I'm not sure it even qualifies as any. Um, but it was that uh, the therapist or whatever he was, he had them switch seat. And so I don't know if you noticed like when you walked in, but it was like the mom and then it was the sister. And they talked about how like they normally supported each other in the arguments. And then it was the father, and then it was the son. And they were, like, more of buddies, like, oh, the girls are just so hard on you kind of thing. So I thought that was funny that they all kind of sat next to their allies. And then throughout the meeting, as they, like, delved into it more and the real issues that were kind of in there, um, they ended up being the daughter next to the son with the dad next to the mom. And I thought that was really powerful, like, with the parents being put together because, like, 
I don't know. It just, I felt like it gave them more open communication because they're sitting next to who should actually have their backs. I'm like, you know, at least with that parent one, like I said, I don't know if it is one, but I, I know it wasn't an accident that he had them switch seats that many times. I think that might be a more subtle one because he wasn't, he didn't tell them why he was doing it. He just did it. That's true. Um, okay. I thought it was interesting too. Like, I'm surprised he didn't switch the brother and the sister sooner. Mm -hmm. Because the meeting, it kind of seemed like everybody was against the brother and like he was on a separate couch and all that. Yeah, that's right. And so I was like, okay, this is like anti-brother meeting. (laughs) (laughs) That's true. Very much like against him in the beginning. And then uh, the therapist, I'm just going to say the therapist because I don't think it actually said what his title was but the therapist like totally rewrote it and like re-delved into totally different issues than what they came in for and I just thought that was so cool (laughs) yeah okay so that was my first one I don't know if anyone wants to go next um the one thing that I saw well I just like went down straight down um but in the family belief systems Am I highlighted in there that it says that they powerfully influence how members view their adverse situation, their suffering, and their options? And so, like, this brother, has, I think he grad, he's, like, graduated from high school, but, it, like, he's still living at home type of thing. Mm-hmm. And so, to the world, some of the things that he might be doing wasn't necessarily bad, but because of the belief system that the family had, it... Um, mm, viewed the adverse situation and the options that they had differently because he was reacting like the family was reacting to what they believed when the son was necess- wasn't necessarily going against what the world would do. Mhm. And I thought so, that was interesting. So his family viewed negatively on what the world would support. Sorry, I'm trying to figure out how, yeah, how to like expand good. on that. Yeah, that's that okay. Yeah. Okay. Because like the drinking and smoking right. stuff is more of a worldly thing that isn't a bad thing to do, but when it's part of your belief system to not do that, it's a problem. <laughs> Where are the questions at that you guys are looking at? <laughs> um, it was the document link. Uh, so if you like go to the assignment where the video is, it's right. the number two above the video box. It says have a printed copy of Strengthening Family Resilience Chapter 6. And so we're going off of just the points the in that document. bullet points on page four, I think. My thing's a little garbled. I can't see. Yeah. Um, I think four. Yeah. And so- oh, okay. Gotcha. I'm there. I'm pretty sure that's what she meant for us to do. I'm not sure. I read that. I was like, I think this is it. Yeah, I was confused too. Okay. Sorry. Um, okay. Miss part of your Okay, perfect. Okay. So um is it Kaylee or Callie? Callie. Callie, okay. Do you have one that you noticed from the video? Um, uh, I guess for making meaning, uh, I, subtle references. Um, I I don't know if this counts, but they he got the side of the story from each family member, so each person was able to reference I guess what they saw and the meaning behind the brother's um, rebellious phase or whatever Mm -hmm. (laughs) even though he swore he wasn't being rebellious you know so I don't know if that's a reference no I think I think it's definitely under communication processes um possibly open emotional expression because he was yeah. allowing each of them to express their own opinions and emotions on the situation, right? Right, yeah. I liked how he justified everybody's feelings, too. 
Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. I thought that was interesting. I was like, oh, he's not telling anyone that that's totally wrong. You know, he's like, oh, you're right. And you're right. I'm like, not everybody can be right, but apparently that's wrong. It was just good. Cause like he kept, like he kept the communication open. Like it made it so everybody was willing to talk to him because he was justifying like, oh, you feel like that? Like, that's totally okay to feel like that. And I was like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that's so good. Cause I totally would have been like, guys, get your crap together. I know. I would have totally been on the sun and been like, dude, just text your mom. It doesn't kill you. Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, apparently I will not be good at this in the future, but oh well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh shoot. I just deleted it. Uh-huh. Sorry. I accidentally deleted the document I had pulled up that I was looking through. Okay. Perfect. Um, so I guess that, that one kind of leads into one of the other ones that I saw. Um, and I think this was probably a more subtle one. Cause like, once again, I couldn't really find it. I know, like I couldn't find a specific point that it seemed to cover. Um, but that was that in the beginning of his meeting, he, um, I was sorry. I just realized I was really up close to my camera. So I look blue. Um, but he talked to each of them kind of like what you were saying he justified like their feelings sort of situation but even before that he related to them on each each on their own level like he asked the mom what are some things you like to do and then each time like like obviously some of the things like when he was talking to the son about skateboarding obviously you know that man is not spending his week in skateboarding but he took the time to try and relate to him by asking him okay what's one of the tricks and not just that but he would say okay what does that mean explain this to me and he really did a great job of connecting to each of them on a one-on-one level which i felt improved their openness with him through the entire session because at least in the beginning he connected with each of them and so they felt safe and willing to open up about you know deep feelings when typically we don't like sharing stuff like that so like i said i couldn't find one of the points that that went under so i'm not sure if that's a more subtle one what would you guys say i mean you could put it under like the connectedness or whatever and like the connectedness between like the therapist and the family oh that's true okay i like that i thought too um like the positive outlook is I thought it was interesting that when they really got into it, the dad wasn't super upset what the son was doing. Oh yeah. I like, he was more like, Oh, he's just like hanging out with friends. So I felt like he had more of a positive outlook on it, but he was reacting because his wife was reacting. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was an interesting thing that he brought out because I feel like that's kind of what my husband would do. It'd be like, it's not that bad, but it's upsetting my wife. So I'll just go with it. Right. Well, and that's when he had them switch seats to sit like next to each other. And I was like, oh, that's so powerful because like, he's just supporting her. And she thinks that her anger is being warranted by his reaction instead of just being able to talk to each Mm -hmm. other. I mean, there was definitely a lot of communication errors with this family, I feel like. (laughs) For sure. Okay, so sorry, I'm not a fast typer, so I'm trying to catch up for a second. Um, um, Callie, can you remind me again when you talked about open emotional expression? That was for which part of the video? (laughs) That was for um kind of at the beginning when they were talking and really digging in to what the problem is and the views of each of the family members. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Sorry about this guys. No, you're good. Okay, perfect. And then, um, is it Mariah? Yeah. Okay. And then what would you like, what category would you like me to put 
for um uh, that one we just talked about sorry the connectedness or the positive outlook the connectedness because you brought up the husband and wife so did you want that to go under connected and mutual sport teamwork commitment that sounds about right to me yeah okay so another one on connected okay uh tab. I didn't say how long this has to be, though, so that's... Mm -mm. He was 19. Support her. Okay, perfect. Okay. Uh, yeah, I don't even think I went through all the instructions. Okay, so we're supposed to, during the discussion, note the trends of your findings as a group. Did everyone identify the same points? Talk about your observations. Anyone surprised? And then write the summary and submit. In the last 15 minutes of the Zoom meeting, the person who was in charge of composing the summary should share it with the group to make sure that all team members agree with the work produced and help revise it as appropriate. This collaboration may be done by any means chosen by the group. Thank you, Mariah, for setting that up. <laughs> and the final version of the summary should be a Word document, so I can copy that over as soon as we've all gotten that ready. And I'll just do that on Saturday, sometime before midnight so I give everyone an opportunity to add to it especially like the two other members in our group if they decide they want to add some of their points to it since they weren't here for the actual meeting and maybe that would help um I texted chance but joy didn't put her phone number on there okay thank mm -hmm. you for doing that did he answer mm -hmm. okay all right um da -da -da. once the summary is approved by the group ready for submission so yeah, she does not have a time limit. Um, let's see, do we feel like there were any other subtle or like big things that were hit for the meeting that we wanna add to the list together before we? All right, well, she said we yes. actually have to meet for an hour, I think. Yeah. Oh, she did? Where was that? Sorry, I didn't see I that. She's in there somewhere. Okay. Well, Chance, just text me back. He said he's getting on. Okay. Oh. We, we can grill him for more points. <laughs> so one, um, I guess, skipping to the end was collaborative problem solving. Um, the therapist asked, like, what the parents could do, and the dad's like, oh, we used to have date nights, and he's like, yeah, <laughs> how about you ask your wife on a date now? <laughs> and then, um, then encourage the siblings to go on, like, an ice cream date. Just like activities where they can connect. Yeah. Okay, I put collaborative problem solving, date nights were suggested, and sibling outings, more opportunities for them to connect with one another. Yeah. Anything else I should add to that? Um, I don't think so. Okay, cool. Um, All right. We can also add emotional sharing and positive interactions. Positive. Oh yeah, I think I had that one written down. Uh, enter. Okay. And was that one for you just more of like that they felt safe in their environment and that they were able to express without any repercussions happening with the therapist or were you thinking of a different part? Um, well, right at the beginning of that section, it says open communication supported by a climate of mutual trust, empathy, and tolerance for differences enables mm -hmm. family members to share a wide range of feelings that can be aroused by crisis situations and chronic stress. So I think, um, like the therapy that they were doing was giving them an opportunity to look back on that positive experience that they had with each other. Okay. And it gave them the ability to... Maybe look back on the resources or like the 
different things that he gave them to be able to work through the issues that they could find in the future. Hold on, my baby's stuck. That's okay. What did you do? Uh -oh. Raising the situation. Okay, perfect. Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Um, we've got one. We've got the positive outlook. They didn't really talk a lot about spirituality, or I feel like they didn't talk a lot about faith. Um, the thing I remember him saying was that parents can have some help from the other side. It's like the only thing that was in the video um, on like what to do with their kids. And I was like, yeah. wink, oh. wink, they're in Rexburg. You're a Mormon. Go to your bishop. <laughs> right. I was like, that was pretty vague. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even sure. Should we put that under the subtle or should we just let that one slide? I'm not even sure. <laughs> I say we put it. What was that? I say we put it. It couldn't. Okay. Be. Should I put it under subtle? I don't think yeah. it was very overt. <laughs> um, we can also put the clear information. and Because he said, by helping families clarify and share crucial information about adverse events or current situation and future expectations, um, they can facilitate meaning making, emotional sharing, and informed decision making. And I think that was a big thing that he did, is that he helped them get their feelings out in the open. Yeah. And, like was able to clarify like just because the mom is reacting like this doesn't mean she doesn't care it actually means that she really cares and i think that's an important point you know? Come here. okay sorry i'm bad at typing and listening so i just did the spiritual reference what was the last one <laughs> Sorry. No, you're good. Um, clear information. Okay. okay. Perfect. Yeah, he did a good job of like oh, restating oh, everything. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Um. Okay, so let's see. Um, I wonder if he's coming. I kind of just went, I'm just going down the list to see if there's anything, like, as I read it, that pop out, like, oh, he did that in the meeting. Um, he kind of did show, he kind of did bring in the aspect of flexibility a little bit because, I mean, this kind of goes with, like, near the end, like, what, someone had mentioned about like date nights and stuff. I think this kind of goes with that, but you know, he tried to reorganize them and try and I don't know, get them in a di almost like a different family ask. I don't know. Um, I don't know. Just kind of like how the mom and dad were kind of against each other with their feelings. And then like the sister was against like the brother, like he kind of reorganized them so that they were more allies again. I'm not sure. I may have just said gibberish. Well, I guess to add to that, though, too, is that, like, he kind of brought up, like, you're an adult. Like, you feel like you should be able to hang out with your friends and do whatever you want. Yeah. Like, like the hard part of you still living at home. And I think that would be an important point to make, whereas, like, they could increase the flexibility of the parents and the kids, like, just tell your mom where you are. Like, <laughs> but okay. also while realizing like, yeah, my kid's an adult. Like he's going to be going out and doing adult stuff because he can. And he's an adult. I think I don't know. you're out of high school. Get out of the house. <laughs> you're right. fine. Be gone. <laughs> um, on page 12 too, it talks about like, um, 
addressing the family challenges over time and the risks and resilience. So we could we could do a risk factor and resilience, like um, under more subtle. Well, just do different like risk factors and resilience. Oh, okay. There's like two different. Okay, so let's see. Come here, buddy. So I think some risk factors, so then do you just want to like talk about some risk factors and resilience factors along that line? Sure. Okay. Sorry to distract you from baby. <laughs> no, he was being funny. I told him to come here and he's like, uh-uh. <laughs> How old is he? 14 months. Aw, so cute. Okay. Um, all right. So some risk factors. Let's just start with that one. Um, uh, sorry, I keep I'm see, reading risk factors and I'm thinking of the case analysis we just had to do for yesterday. Oh, I know. Because that's one of the questions and I'm like, ah, that was so hard to watch. Um, well, I guess this is decreasing risk factors. So it says reduce the exposure or overload of stress. So I think that, um, well, I think a risk factor is, B is the reaction that the mom has every time. Right. Um, like maybe remove herself from the situation before she actually goes into it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I feel like the, so maybe we, the, one of the risk factors could be like the mother's reaction every single time her son does something is that it pushes him away. Right. Cause he felt that when she was yelling at him, she was trying to show that she cared for him and she was upset that she he wasn't home when really he was reading it as you're yelling at me you don't love me what's the point of right okay so let's see here um mother's reaction uh word so we're just talking about risk uh, risk factors right now, right? Yeah. I see. Okay. Yeah. Unless so, we have any more subtle or overt references. No. So another one, <clears throat> this doesn't really have to do with the family, but as I was watching this video, I was getting really annoyed at the therapist. <laughs> he, just how he was talking, because he was like making jokes and saying like, Oh, I don't want to ask you this dumb question, but I will. And I was like, if I go to you for this meeting, it's because I'm serious. I want serious, like, input. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, I, if I, that was me in that therapy session, I would have shut down. There was no way I would have opened up. And right. so that's another risk was the family could have reacted the same way I would have. And right, just, you, you're going with a serious problem. You want someone to take you seriously, not <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay, that, makes sense. that makes sense. Okay, hey, buddy. Um. Oh. Sorry, I take forever typing. You're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Okay, I think I typed that adequately. Um, okay, so Chance, have you been able to log on to our document on Google Docs yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm just trying to trying to get caught up to speed on what's going on with that. Okay, yeah. So we went through, and under the instructions, she wants us to list the overt references towards Walsh's document, and then the subtle ones. Okay. 
So if when you catch up, if you find any that you would like to add, feel free just to add them in there on the bullet points. Or if you want to talk to us about them, we're more than happy to talk about them. Okay. Um, the meeting's supposed to last an hour, so we kind of kind of hit a wall. So we went ahead and started putting risk factors and resilience factors, and that's what we're working on now. Okay. Are any of you getting that like remaining meeting time, seven and a half minutes? Oh yeah. Uh, no, I've got it minimized. I can bring it up. Oh, mine just I just said that they were going to let me have it have it past forty minutes for my first. And Okay, good. <laughs> I was like, we can't lose. <laughs> We're not in an hour. Okay. Um, okay. So let's see. Are there any other risk factors that come to anyone's mind just right off the bat besides the mother's reaction towards the son and the son, you know, his under here, what that makes him feel, and then the therapist's jokes? Um, um, maybe the the brother and sister's relationship could be at risk because she's more taking the parent's side than his side and he doesn't feel like he has an ally in the family. I saw that a lot. I was totally like, oh, she's a little tattletale. <laughs> uh -huh. Uh -huh. So I don't know about you, but when my, in my family, if someone like tells our parents something about the other one that they did wrong, like, it's not like they're rewarded, rewarded, but my mom's always like, oh, thank you so much for telling us. Now we can talk to them about it. I don't know. Growing up as a teenager, I was always like, yeah, that's right. I know what to say. <laughs> my so, mom was always like, don't tattle. Snitches get stitches. I was like, that's a good <laughs> thing to say. Your mom sounds cool. <laughs> my mom's so funny. I am. Oh, there it is. Okay. Sorry. I was having a hard time typing for a second. Okay. So the sibling relationship. Oh, because they haven't played against each other. Not sure I stated that the best way, but I think it works. Okay. Um, let's see. Resilience factors. I'm trying to. Easy. I'm trying to find where it talks about resilience factors, and all I can find are the risk factors. Um, strength and protective family processes and reduced vulnerabilities. That's part of the resilience. Okay. And then bolster family and individual pride and efficacy through successful problem mastery. Okay. So I think a resilience factor could be the fact that they went to therapy. That's true, actually. I completely agree with that. Yeah. Okay. I also included in there that it, it was a resilience factor that they went as a family and not just like the parents or just one of the siblings or something like that. Uh, let's see. I'd almost say another resilience factor was that they said they would try going on date night and a sibling outing too, but we kind of already included that with the overt reference, so I'm not sure it needs to be stated again. You could. I mean, that, it does, it accomplishes. Okay. Okay. 
I think another one, um, another resilience factor was that um, they confirmed each other's feelings. They not only listened, but the therapist kind of went one by one and made them acknowledge, oh, they make you feel this way. What do you think about that? <laughs> yeah. And there wasn't a lot of arguing, like, even though... No. My family would have been shouting at the top of their lungs. <laughs> so it showed some resilience that they they stayed calm. And like you said, Kelly, they were listening to each other and they were yeah. taking it all in before they answered. Okay, I really like that one. <clears throat> yeah, there wasn't even interrupting, I think, at any point. <laughs> that was rare. <laughs> you guys mentioned anything about having it in a controlled environment too i do not think we have no i think that's cr especially when it's i mean honestly i've done therapy before and it's nice to have a controlled environment because nobody has like you guys are saying there's no emotional outburst or everybody gets their own turn <laughs> to speak and most therapists are usually just a mediator they just listen and if you have questions you mostly just ask them and that's something that's especially with a family in their situation it's key to have a mediator that can interrupt if there's arguing or if there's anything along those lines too okay so does that fit under any of walsh's categories or should i make that its own um you could put it under resilience factors because i think that's just kind of thinking okay okay because that makes it so it's like they can work through the problems effectively instead of like a family council dealing with it on their own. <laughs> okay. All right, got that one under resilience factors then. Just about, okay. Let's see what else I've got in my notes. Let's see here. Um, I like the um, reducing negative chain reactions at height for sustained impact and further crisis. So he gave them, um, he gave them ways I don't know if we put this, but he gave them ways to work through it where it doesn't just build and build and build and explode. Yeah. yeah. Like they're effectively going to be working through it. I don't know if we put that. But... Okay, and what category did you have that under? It was... I put that under resilience. More resilience, okay. Sorry, I thought you said one of the things at the beginning. Okay. Okay. So I just put the therapist gave them techniques and advice to work through their emotions without the emo emotions damaging themselves or others. Do you feel like that represented that, or would you like me to add something to it? No, nope, sounds good. Okay, cool. All right, let's see. Do you have anything else to add to the top part, Chance? Nope, you're muted. So I got a lot of kids in the background. So no, the only other thing I think with um, something that hit me with risk factors is um, they have things to do at home. Like I, you always think of a relationship as a three-legged stool, but it has to be something they're willing to do at home. So if the therapist gives you an idea and if you don't follow through with it, I think it's a huge risk factor by not diligently doing what he tells you to do or gives you ideas for. 
you're not going to be a successful family if you don't do this. Like It'll just make things worse in the long run. All right. That's a great risk factor. Okay, the family will not follow the advice or ideas. Not learning from the therapist. What's your last name, Chance? Ride, W R I D E. Okay, perfect. All right, added in that one. We're almost there, guys. <laughs> almost to the end. We only have to really talk for three more minutes, and then we just have to recap. <laughs> yeah. I feel bad. Like, I feel like we got a lot of the big things just out of the way in the beginning. Um, Where did he go? I don't... <laughs> what? Chance disappeared. Yeah. Oh, well. <laughs> Well, I'm glad he came in for a little bit. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Let's see here. I mean, are there any other subtle things that we saw? Ooh, that's a good point. Subtle, like different subtleties. Oh. No, the guy really wasn't that subtle with a lot of things. <laughs> he was very point blank. Um. I was just thinking, like, different things that the family saw, or, like, the family did, like, oh, yeah. the sister seemed pretty closed off. Yeah, she, I think, I agree with you there. I think she was the one that contributed the least in the family dynamics of it all. Like, she was just sitting there, like, I thought it was interesting that she, she, you could tell she wasn't super engaged because she kept, like, tucking her feet under herself and just, like, getting comfortable instead of, like, um, you know, sitting up, yeah, shoulders yeah, forward, yeah. like showing attention. Yeah. Um. Well, so some references to could be the sister showed a lack of interest, probably the most likely not to follow through with the challenges given by the therapist. Would that work? Yeah, mm -hmm. that sounds good. Okay. Whoop. Okay. Okay. Oh, that I was a good one. I think another risk factor is that the dad was trying to be more like the son's friend than the parent. Ah, that's very true. Okay. Got more of a instead of a father figure. Chance just said my computer just shut off and now it's updating. <laughs> <laughs> I hate it when my computer does that. <laughs> I know, mine does that too. It is not fun. Well, at least you got to come on for a little bit. Yeah. Um. Did you put the, oh yeah, you saw it. Yep. I, I put it under subtle with the, were you going to say about the sister? No, I, yeah, you, you're good. I was going to say the father trying to make. Oh yeah, good. I got him at the bottom of the risk factors. Yep, I saw that. Cool. Okay. Well, do I want to just recap now? Yeah, I think we did. I think we did a pretty good job there. I mean, that's a pretty good list in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, let's see, um, okay, compose, who is in charge of composing the summary should share it with the group. Oh, yes, <laughs> okay, can we write a summary really quick? 
Oh, so we need a summary other than what we have? I think it means a summary, like kind of what we do with our other case analysis, like a summary of the case. Oh, okay. So I apologize, I did not do that before the meeting. I missed that. Um, so everyone has the word document up on their screen, right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'm just gonna start typing and then you tell me what not to put or what to include as I get to the end, okay? Sure. Okay. Um, I'll edit for you. Thank you. Okay. How does that kind of sound? <laughs> um, you could add this case was about a family of four going into a therapist. <laughs> I <don't even> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Oh, that was funny. Oh, dang it. <laughs> there you go. Okay. Um, also, let's see. This, I guess. I'm going to put a legal adult instead of an adult. Because even though he's technically an adult, I don't think he acts like an adult. So, right. I'll put legal. Um, special ended with challenge. Okay, um, I mean, I'm a very cut and dry person. I think that sounds good. Do we need to include anything about the emotions that were referenced or any stuff like that? I, I think that sounds know. good to me. Okay. All right, that looks good then. Okay, uh, let's see. Uh, the rest of the instructions for this just say, okay, so we've got the summary down. We all agree on it. Um, yeah, so it just talks about everyone should check the Google Doc again to make sure that they like how things were said or if they wanna add points that we later think of, we can do that. Um, like I said, I'll transform it into a Word document and then I'll submit it on Saturday. Um, I'll try and do it a little earlier, like more like uh, seven, and I'll try to remember to email everyone saying that I've submitted it. You could just do it like now. Do you want to do it now? I didn't know if we wanted to give the other two chance and our fifth person an opportunity to add anything to it, or do you think we're good? I'm, I think if they miss the meeting, they have to do the assignment on their own. Oh, okay, okay. All right, well, then I'm going to go ahead and copy it, and I'll put it into a Word document right now, and then we can upload that. And then, Mariah, you don't mind uploading the video? Nope, I'll do that for sure. Awesome. And then it looks like the only other thing we have to do for this assignment is we have to self-evaluate of our preparedness and contributions after the meeting. Once again, sorry, I slacked as a host. Give me the appropriate grade. <laughs> um, okay. Um, let's see. I'm getting the Word document going. I'll upload that as soon as I've got it saved. 
I don't know. I think we're good unless anybody feels like there's something else we need to discuss really quick or change or do or something. Nope, I think we're good. All right.